All right, here we go. Let the crazy begin. Uh, five minutes. <laughs> five minutes into my uh, trip of ten to fifteen thousand miles, and the Albanians are going crazy. Uh, roads are blocked in downtown Tirana, which is the capital city, the busiest place in the whole country. It's a Saturday. People are trying to get places, and the cops have roads blocked. I don't know why. Maybe there's festivals or something, but people are freaking out. So now for me to get to where I'm going is a big uh, question mark. Not really sure how that's going to work out or if it's going to work out. I mean, of course, I'll get there. And I think that's something that I really need to remember. I got caught this morning in a parking structure. I paid for parking last night. Okay, so just go on the, okay. See, what does that hand signal mean? Glad I got the 1.6 liter, okay. Um, I got caught in a parking structure this morning. It doesn't have ramps up and down. It just has a single car elevator to go up and down. They kept sending cars down to my level and the level was full. So people would circle back around, try to get back on the elevator, the single car elevator. But as they pull up to the elevator, there's another car coming off the elevator. Now they got to back up and wait, which I had to do. I had to back up and wait. That car comes off the elevator. I pull forward. By the time I pull forward, the elevator's closed. It's going back up to get another car. How do you get out? What do you do? You've got places to be. When I'm in a situation like that, I feel like whatever's happening in the moment is never going to change and this is just my reality now. So when I see such a huge breakdown like that, um, I get pissed. I get so mad so fast because I start feeling anxious and trapped and then I just uh, default to anger because it's a more comfortable feeling than hopelessness, despair, or anxiety. And uh, that's my story. So five minutes into this journey that will last at least two months, I think I have all the documents I, that anyone could possibly want. Um, there's a couple countries I can't go to. I can't go to Belarus. I can't go to Russia, uh, Ukraine, or Bulgaria, or Turkey. So that's kind of the, the eastern limit of my trip. Other than that, I'd like to try to get to every place I can possibly get to. This car so far is great. I'm really glad it doesn't have the snow tires on it like the last car did. Here's the, not snow tires, but winter tires. Here's the thing about winter tires. They are so soft that when you launch into a corner, the car shifts and then settles and grabs. But it's, the tires are so gummy that they, they're, they feel like they're gonna be destroyed in a, like really fast. It's really crazy. This is my turn. Come on, fuckers. It's weird how they jerk right up on your face. Like, that, that didn't sound good. Um, <laughs> They get right up in there like, you're like, no way, I'm letting you in. And then they're like, come on, man, what are you waiting for? You're like, I'm waiting for space. I'm waiting to not crash my car. So it's kind of funny that people are honking because no one can do anything at this moment. But they're just all frustrated. You don't see people screwing around or goofing off. It, it feels tense. It genuinely feels tense here. So I'm actually going to meet someone I met at Enterprise Rent-A-Car yesterday who was planning a future trip with his girlfriend. And he's in the Peace Corps. He's from, I believe, North Carolina. And uh, so I'm gonna go meet with him on the way into Montenegro and just kind of learn a little bit about what he's doing. See what it's like in the Peace Corps to be stationed in Albania. All right, let's do a traffic circle. Madness, madness! This one's not as bad as last night. Come on, oh! Come on, come on, come on, come on! This guy's gotta get over. Hell yeah, he does. What you gonna do now? Oh, there's a power, nice. Oh, and then it opens up over here. All right, let's do another traffic circle. This one looks a little more hectic. Actually, it's a little peaceful. I mean, even though we've got two lanes, 
that are smashed into six. Well, three smashed into six, let's be fair. A little more give and take. It's really surprising to me how these systems of chaos and what seems like disorder actually create pretty functional ways of existing and of organizing and of um, coexisting. If you look around here and it's hard to believe a lot of times that everybody survives, that people aren't constantly dying of stress and heart attacks. You know, there are places that are more chaotic than this, but for a European country, this is, this is pretty nuts. But they make it work. There's something in the chaos. There's a rhythm to it. There is a flow to it. It may not be quantifiable, but it's real. It's, it's the dance. And one of the things that I realized when I was walking down the street today is that you stand out when you don't understand the flow and the rhythm of the place. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. You just stand out. You're not fitting into the algorithm. You're not in the flow of what's happening. So you're standing on the street in some kind of way that people don't stand on the street. You're just walking, you're merging, you're doing whatever, but it's not the same flow. You're not getting as close or staying as far away or blending or having as much faith in the way that the system works as somebody else. You're a little more nervous, you're uh, out of step, you're a half step behind. And all these things just, they make a difference. There's a flow to a place and sometimes it takes a while for me to get into that flow, but when I realize that that's what it is, oh, I need to, I need to feel my way through this, not step my way through this. It makes a difference and I'm able to get into it a little bit better. Whether it's how I deal with car traffic, how I deal with foot traffic, how I deal with interacting with people, how aggressive or laid back I am, how close I'm going to stand to somebody in front of me. I mean, these things really can throw other people off that are native to that culture because they don't understand what you're doing and they don't know what your intentions are and they don't know how to read you. Most of our communication, right, is body language and it's nonverbal communication. I guess that's a better way to put it. And so I can be saying something, but if I'm kind of carrying myself differently than what I'm saying, then they get confused and sometimes they get frustrated and it's not their fault.